everybody, and thanks for joining me today. Once again at the top of another diagonal. Uh, so what's new? Let's see. Oh yes, Sun uh, ran in his triathlon. Had a good time. We were really fortunate because it was miserable weather for most of the week. We actually had a bit of a storm the uh, day before the triathlon, but thankfully it cleared up and we had a nice sunny day with a bit of a breeze so it wasn't too hot for the triathlon, so that worked out really well. Only drawback is I got a sunburn. Yeah, I'm very diligent about sun safety. I was wearing a sun hat and I did put on sunscreen, but somehow I missed a spot, which somehow I always managed to do. And uh, yeah, so from the base of my neck down to the uh, edge of where my, uh, my shirt started, I burned <laughs> because I missed that spot when I was putting on sunscreen. I somehow always managed to. Uh, so yeah, I couldn't even stitch for a couple of days afterwards because um, moving my arms around made my shirt move and rub against the burn. So <laughs> I even went and I put on the uh, loosest t-shirt I had with the biggest neckline to try and avoid it rubbing against the burn, but it still did. So <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. Uh was unable to stitch for a couple of days because of that so that wasn't fun but uh it's getting better now still red but it's not it's not hurting like it was before so yeah thankfully i have um i have a uh, big pump bottles of aloe vera gel so i was just uh, slathering that on all day uh until it uh started to feel better because the nice thing about it is it feels cooler than um room temperature right so uh yeah that's it's soothing as well as of course the actual effect of the aloe gel is uh is heal has healing properties so yeah i actually bought it years ago for my husband to use his hair gel because it's uh, healthier for your hair than regular gel washes out more easily and it's uh not so, not as, um, doesn't make it as dry and prone to breakage. So he doesn't really use it that much anymore, but yeah, he did for a long time. So it's actually funny. Um, one time he uh, finished taking a shower and his hair was all puffy because he hadn't, you know, gelled it down. And our son was about two or something at the time and he points at um his hair and starts freaking out because he wanted him to comb it down so it wasn't puffy anymore because <laughs> it was wrong right that's not what dad's hair is supposed to look like so <laughs> it's pretty funny oh yeah, even when they can't talk they can still they can still make themselves understood you know <sighs> but yeah so it's fun so the triathlon he didn't do the whole thing he uh was in a team with some friends so one did the biking one did the swimming and then he and another friend buddied up to do the uh, running portion so yeah it was um, a three kilometer run and he and um his dad had been uh training for about six weeks so um he actually had not done the whole three kilometers prior to that day he'd done two and a bit but uh, yeah, he made it. He said he walked for a little bit on one of the laps, but other than that, he ran the whole way. So yeah, very proud. Oh, goodness, a piece of tape there stuck to my scissors. That's because kiddo borrowed them to do, do some art project. <laughs> I had to find them before I started this session or I would have been in trouble. <sighs> But yeah, luckily nobody else burned, so it's just me. I um, one of my great grandparents was uh, Irish, and so I swear I said I may not be a redhead, but I got a redhead skin because I just freckle and burn so easily. If I even think about the sun, I can't tan at all. 
so I have to be really diligent about seeking out the shade and putting on sunscreen and it was sort of a borderline day of the temperature of whether to wear shorts or pants so of course I wore pants because I wanted my legs covered protected from the sun so I don't blind everybody with them because <laughs> yeah they're ghostly ghostly pale I'm either yes ghost white or lobster red there's no in between Okay, that piece has enough left for doing some single stitches, so we'll save it. So I am a thread miser. But yeah, so my husband said uh, the uh, first time they went out to go running, the sun ran like 10 meters, and that was like, oh, I'm so tired. It's like, oh, geez, you know, great. <laughs> You signed up for a triathlon, but uh, no, they, they made it. So they started going out for walks for the first couple of weeks, and then they started going for runs and also bike rides. So uh, yeah, they built up that, uh, built up that stamina. So they made it. It's pretty good. Yeah, and uh, we finally had to buy him another bike, too, because he finally outgrew the, the kids one. So, I was letting him use mine, but uh, he's even bigger than me now, so, yeah, he needed another. Plus, I mean, sometimes we like to go for rides, all of us, all three of us, so that's nice. Oh dear. Yeah, and then so the next day, they had a uh, car show in town, and um, it rained and stormed that day. Oh, I felt so bad for some of the car owners because some of them were convertibles. And uh, there was one, somebody actually put a giant bag over it. But yeah, there was one that had like wood on the interior, and they could, they didn't have the top to put up so got rained on just like oh no that's terrible didn't rain for too long but I mean enough that a bunch of people packed up and went home and then uh but yeah we stuck around it actually worked out kind of nicely because um we went and grabbed some food from my uh my uncle's food truck because he has a uh, fish and chips truck so we went and grabbed lunch, sat in the truck and ate while we waited for the, the rain to pass. And then, uh, yeah, by the time we were done, lunch, it had mostly cleared up because, uh, as they say in Canada, if you don't like the weather, just wait 10 minutes. <laughs> Ooh. And then, yeah, by the end of that day, we had beautiful blue skies. Uh, some friends from the car club invited a bunch of people over for a little sort of backyard party to uh, have some pizza and such, so... I figured it was outside, so yeah. We are still technically in a pandemic, but yeah. And then actually it was funny because somebody had some, these trikes, like adult-sized tricycles, and uh, so they started running races on them. <laughs> and my son actually came in at, like second place against a bunch of the adults too. It was quite fun. And I kept telling him, you know, you better stretch out so your legs aren't going to cramp tomorrow, but I guess he's got more stamina than me from the uh, triathlon because uh he was fine the next day like he didn't stretch at all and he wasn't crampiest at all like my thighs were burning just watching you <sighs> yeah so that was fun ah oh, kind of nice to be able to get together with people again at least somewhat Okay, so there's a bit of confetti in this area. Twenty-seven, sixty. Okay, put my envelopes back out of order slightly. They had thirty-seven sixty-six before thirty-seven sixty. So, yeah, I was having a little trouble locating it. Oh yeah, this is an older bit of floss I've had for quite a while. You can see the uh, the kinks on it. it was from uh, 
it was stored on a bobbin for years, left over from a different pattern. Yeah, that's why I don't use bobbins anymore. The kinks in the yarn tend to uh, make it knot up and tangle more easily. Actually, I saw where one um, stitcher on YouTube, she keeps a little sponge and actually will pull the, um, you know, sort of fold the thread inside the sponge and pull it through, wet it all the way along to get the kinks out. And then she just sort of hangs them like over the armchair, arm of her chair or something and lets them dry. So she kind of preps a few before she's going to stitch with them and uh, yeah, gets the kinks out and then does it that way, which I thought was a pretty good idea. I like to just store mine in envelopes and avoid the kinks altogether, but I mean, if you have had your stuff on bobbins, yeah. It's a way to remove the, the tangles, potentially. Oh, goodness. Having difficulty with my claws there. Okay. Right, so this one I'm going to end off now. It is not worth parking it anywhere. Yeah, so of course I'm at the triathlon. I brought my lawn chair and my knitting. <laughs> I was kind of disappointed there were no other crafters there. I was the only one. Yeah, I've had a few times, like, uh, I remember we were visiting family, our son was about four or something, and uh, so I took him to the little play area in the ferry, and there was another mom there who was also knitting, so yeah, we, uh, we hit it off really nicely, oh, what you making, oh, cool, you know, how long have you been knitting, that kind of thing, so yeah. Yeah, I find it's a quick way to make friends. Even people who don't craft will come up and be curious. Oh, what you making, you know? So kind of makes an icebreaker. Plus, gives me something to do with my hands. Yeah, I hate not having anything to do. I get very fidgety. I guess it's the uh, ADHD, but yeah. That's why I picked up uh, crafts, because uh, let's turn that energy into something productive. That way I'm not biting my nails or anything like that. That's going to actually cause harm to me. I can actually create something beautiful. Yeah, and I don't really like to take my um, cross-stitching with me as much, especially outside because it's just too easy to get it dirty. And, you know, for something to happen to it, it would be just heartbreaking. So I only take it for travel if I'm, like, actually going to a friend's house and we're going to be inside. And usually my friend's also a stitcher, you know, so... We'll sit there and have a stitch session, stitch and gab session. Oh, actually, that's pretty long, but the way it's positioned, I'm not sure if I want to do it that way. Let me figure it out. Yeah, either way, I'm going to end up doing something out of order. So what I think I'm going to do is, let me see. I think I'm going to break my guidelines and do this one stitch, lone stitch out here, out of order. So usually I don't do that because I don't like closing things in, but sometimes it just works out that that is the most efficient way. Whoops, I was trying to, oh goodness, having difficulties here, I'm trying to highlight. But yeah, sometimes that just turns out to be the most efficient way. I don't really want to attach another thread sometimes because I have plenty of threads attached that can do all the stitches. And so, as I say, there's no rules. So occasionally I will do one out of order if that's just sort of the way that makes sense. Okay. So I could have unparked it and then done that one lone stitch by itself with a new piece of thread, but I really didn't feel like it, so. So I deviated from my, my normal method. They're my rules, so I can break them, right? <laughs> yeah, something like that. Yeah. 
Yeah, you can really tell in this area where the detail is and then where sort of the um, big blocks of color are because there's very few uh, threads parked there. But it's a big section of color. Okay. Ooh, pardon me. So back to this 413 color. We'll see if this thread is probably just long enough to do the stitches I've highlighted and that'll be it. Won't have to decide where to park it because there really won't be a place to do that. Okay, so we're slowly filling in around that one lone stitch that I did out of order. And then soon you won't even be able to tell that I did that. Yeah, we're definitely not going to be in a drought this year. It's been raining a lot. So I'll be curious to see how my apple trees do this year. More rain often means more apples. But then at the same time, if you don't get quite enough sun, they won't. They won't grow as well. So what really seems to affect my uh, apple crop is um, how much of a freeze we get the uh, winter before because uh, last year my little new tree that I planted in 2014 finally started producing fruit and we had that uh, really really cold snap the one where Texas lost power so it was cold up here too but fortunately we have the infrastructure for it so we didn't lose power and uh, yeah we had a week of minus 49 so uh, I think that kick-started that tree and it actually uh got it going at least that's my theory because there seems to be a correlation to uh, a good freeze and a good crop the next year so because yeah i was getting a little worried that that tree was never going to uh, start producing but i got a dozen baseball size apples off it last year so in this year it's got the buds and there's a lot of them i'm going to get way more than a, a dozen apples off of it so So yeah, I'm very happy since the old tree's dying, although that tree's still hanging in there considering all the abuse it's been through. Yeah, it's uh it's got it had fungus growing on it that killed like half of it and uh then uh or at least a third of it. And then um we had a huge windstorm last year that broke the thing in half, but a third of the tree was gone. Like I had some people say, you know, you could maybe strap it back, but it was cracked right, right completely off. So we didn't bother trying because, yeah, that tree's dying. It's been dying for a while, but uh, it's still, still hanging in there and still putting out fruit. Uh, my husband wants it to die because uh, he wants to expand his garage, but the, uh, the apple tree is next to it. So we have a second tree in the backyard, but it doesn't produce any fruit. I'm like, you can cut that one down. I don't care, but I want my apple tree. <laughs> so, uh, and the funny thing is that one, we don't care if it's dying. That one has been through so much. My husband, you know, cut branches off it because they were growing too big. I can't remember why he had to drill a hole into it for something. And that one just won't die. And that's the one that doesn't produce fruit. You know, like, come on. <laughs> All it does is make leaves, you know. But you got to clean up every fall. <sighs> so, yeah, wouldn't mind if that one died, but of course, that's the one that's still going strong. And then, uh, let's see how much I got in this area. Oh, a fair amount. I think I may pull this one and put it in my tray. But yeah, it's always the way, right? The, uh, when you want the tree to die, it will not. It will hang on with everything it's got. And when you want the tree to live, then, you know, catches every little thing out there that'll kill it. Oh, dear. 
Okay, so let's zoom back in. Where was I up here? Okay. Yeah, so one here too. I was climbing up in it to get some fruit, and then it caught my I got caught on a branch and it ripped a hole in my pants. And I said, Oh, I guess it didn't want me stealing from it, you know. <laughs> Taught me a lesson. Hmm. Luckily they were just a pair of old uh sweatpants that I didn't care that much about. <laughs> But yeah, I was right in the rear, so it wasn't like, if it was in the leg, you know, I could have maybe cut the legs off and kept them as at least, you know, bumming around shorts or something, but no, it was right in the seat. Oh my gosh. Yeah, actually, it was nice. Um, My neighbor gave me this apple picker, uh, which is like this really, really long, almost like a cage on a big, long stick. So you can use it to pick the apples. Although I actually just kind of use it to knock them down. I don't really care if they bruise because I'm juicing them anyway. So it, they don't have to be perfect, right? And uh, actually what my husband will do is put on his hard hat, climb up the tree, and then shake all the apples out at the end. So I can get every last one. Or close enough to it. There's always one or two that will just hang on no matter how hard you try to knock them down. They just will not. But... Yeah, when you have like 3,000 apples to juice, one or two getting, getting left behind is really not that big a deal. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, most years I get about 40 liters of apple juice, apple concentrate from there. I used to bottle it like with the water down, not concentrate, but then we got a soda stream machine. So I, uh, I bottle it full strength and then you can add sparkling water and make sparkling apple juice and it's so yummy but yeah as i said before i'll make a video of how i do that how i make it and preserve it because yeah it took a while to perfect the method and you need um i drain it how you drain it to keep the sediment out and such so there's always like a very very tiny little bit at the bottom that i can't get out I think you'd need a, they probably use like a centrifuge or something or a siphon, I don't know. So I can never get it perfect, but pretty good. Yeah, it's nice because they're very tart apples. So to just eat them straight, it's, they're too, too strong. But um, yeah. For juice is nice because of course you can sweeten it up a little bit with some sugar although my son would be okay with it he eats lemons straight just wild we were at the store one time and he wanted to pick out i said you know pick out a fruit for a snack and he grabs a lemon i said you could eat a lemon straight and yeah he does and uh i actually filmed him doing it because it was hard to believe he didn't even wince he was actually more struggling with trying to um pull the you know the fruit off the rind when he was biting into it but actually biting into the lemon and eating it he didn't care my gosh kid like my eyeballs were popping just watching you whoo i was tearing up just thinking about it oh he can handle spicier food than me too takes after his dad I actually didn't used to be able to handle spice at all, but then I worked at a Chinese restaurant for a couple of years after high school. And of course, all the best food was the spicy food. So <laughs> I kind of just learned to endure it. Started with just eating a little bit at a time until I built up some of a tolerance, although I'll never have a, as much of a tolerance as my husband or son, I think. That one did not, I didn't do that quite right. So that pin stitch didn't disappear the way I wanted it to. It'll get stitched over, so it probably wasn't that big a deal, but I can still fix it there. So yeah, if you do a pin stitch properly, at least on this kind of fabric, it just closes right up around it and it's really hard to see. And then you stitch over, it's basically invisible, so, yeah. 
Yeah, it was funny. One of my friends, um, she, uh, you know, they ate curry all the time. So um, they're used to really, really spicy. And, uh, you know, they were visiting some friends and all the guys were like daring each other to eat the super hot salsa and just like, oh, dying over it. And then she and her daughter, who was like two at the time, they just eat it. And they're like, holy cow, you know, you're hardcore. And they're like, what, this is supposed to be hot? <laughs> because compared to the food they usually eat, you know, it was nothing. So it was quite funny. <laughs> yeah, they said it's funny, like, you know, <clears throat> peppers developed um, the, the spiciness, you know, to keep predators from eating them. And then humans specifically grow and eat them because they're spicy. That backfired. Yeah, my uh, my whole family liked it um, when I was a kid. We used to go to Costco and buy these, you know, ginormous jars of banana peppers. My dad, my mom, my sister would eat them. They'd go through one of them in like three weeks, you know, and they were like the great big ones that are like, you know, a couple of liters of... Uh, of hot banana peppers and yeah I can handle some jalapeno if the seeds are taken out so like I'll make my own um uncooked fresh tomato salsa with a jalapeno in it and uh but I have to take the seeds out and even then sometimes it's it's close to my limit of what I can stand Seven, oh, three. Ah, there we go so what I'll often do is I will cut the pepper open and pull all the seeds out with gloves on. Learn that one the hard way. Um, and uh, put them on a plate for uh, my husband and he can add it to his own bowl of salsa. Spice it up as much as he wants. Okay, so because of the way the colors are going, I'm going to reset a bit and go over down to the left and work my way back up. Because the colors are kind of going like in a vertical direction. So in order to keep from closing stuff in, I sort of have to keep going further down the diagonal. So I'm just going to sort of give myself a fresh start. Work my way back over to that area here that I was working on. So that's why, yeah, they, I was uh, taking a survey once we had in one of our cross-stitching groups about how do you stitch diagonally was a, a needle bugs group for the love of diagonal cross-stitching. And they're saying row by row, and I'm going, well, I can't really fit the way I do it into any of the uh, the survey options. So, because <laughs> yeah, I don't go by rows, I don't go by columns, I go by the colors, I go by my way, but it's hard to describe in words. It's actually kind of how I started this channel, is... Uh, People were talking about different ways and I was trying to explain with words about how I fold the colors and don't close stuff in and that was like, okay, trying to explain this in words, is, even with just pictures, is getting to be too complicated. So I'll make a video and that's how this channel was born. <laughs> yeah, I'm one of those people who likes to have um written tutorials with pictures because i like to sort of skim and uh or skip to the relevant parts but sometimes a video tutorial is just still the best way to do it i find apparently again that's another adhd thing so i really like bullet points if you do both and sort of have a video as well, I might watch it, but yeah, I really like having the the written step-by-step -step to refer to. Oh gosh, that kind of reminds me. Uh, when my husband, uh, he was in the military when we met and uh, we were joking about, there's an episode of MASH when they're trying to defuse a bomb and it uh, gives supposedly step-by-step -step instructions, right? You know, and it says, you know, and carefully cut the wires leading to the fuse house assembly. So they cut the wires and then the instructions say, but first remove the fuse, you know, after, like so much for step-by-step. -step. And my husband said, yeah, they actually did have army stuff that was exactly like that. Uh, 
it would say, you know, press this button and turn this key. And then after doing this, like, well, that's not step by step, then say, you know, that thing that you're supposed to do first, actually say that first, because otherwise you're just being confusing as heck. And so he said they actually went through and rewrote it in actual order so that it was actually step by step because yeah, they almost wrecked an expensive piece of equipment by following the supposed step by step instructions, which were all over the place. I joked, you know, did Yoda write these? piece of thread that came out stuck to me to make sure I was putting it back into the right section on my tray. That is the one drawback sometimes with my working tray because it's sort of open at the top sometimes, especially when you're wearing long sleeves and stuff. It can uh, get stuck to your clothing and get traveled around. I even one time was at work at one point and then looked down and I had a piece of thread stuck to my pants. <laughs> So to bring it home and try to find what color it was. Because, uh, of course, on, you know, designs like these, a lot of similar shades to give it that nice, subtle shading. So they could be very close. And you don't want to mix them up like I did with the Marvelous Garden and my uh, 01 versus 1 thing. Gah. I'm not the only one to do that. I said that the frustrating thing is I knew that was an issue people were having and I checked multiple times and still did it. Like, ugh. doing, ugh. Oh, well. So I say, are you even a stitcher if you don't have a story like that? I was like, one of my friends, she said, yeah. She did the, where she got the uh, piece of cloth oriented the wrong way. So it was, uh, cause it's a rectangle, not a square. So it was the wrong way and she would have run out of room on one side. So pulled it out, started again, thought, oh no, I did it the wrong way again. I pulled it out and then turned out the second time. She actually had done it correctly, but she didn't realize until after she pulled it all out. Oh, so she used three starts on that one. It's like, oh, so annoying. I said, at that point, I might have just chucked it, you know, called that piece of uh, cloth cursed and thrown it away. My gosh. I think, yeah, these pieces are all a bit short, so I'm going to pull a brand new one. Oh, or that was like, um, I used to knit a lot more. I do it still, but not as much. And I made a top, and... Um, Instead of sewing the um, shoulder straps, because it was like a tank top with cotton yarn, instead of sewing the shoulder straps together, I did a three needle bind off, which is really nice and neat, and I don't like hand sewing. So anything I could do to avoid that. And uh, I went to put it on, and I couldn't smooth the strap out. And I found out it was I had twisted it and put one wrong side and one right side facing up. So I was like, oh. So I pulled it apart and uh, do it again, and put it on, and... I twisted one part the other way, so now it was backwards, but the other way. So finally, the third time I managed to get it right, it was like, come on. Oh, goodness me. I mean, maybe I should have left it and said it was like intended to be a Mobius or something. Oh, my gosh. Hmm. Yeah, like I remember seeing a meme where somebody said, you know, if your brain's a computer, why doesn't it lag or crash? And it's like, wait, yours doesn't? Because, I mean, mine sure, certainly does. When you're in the middle of a sentence and you forget what you were going to say, or you walk into a room and you forget what you came into the room for. I mean, come on, we all have that. Uh, or when you just, yeah, have a completely you know, absent-minded moment and do something silly. Because, yeah, if you're going to tell me that never happens to you, I don't believe you. <laughs> uh, 
Nobody's that perfect. <sighs> okay. Oh, we're coming up to our bigger section here. That part flies by quite quickly. Oops. Pulled the wrong side to make those line up. Yeah, my husband had where he welded the wrong, the wrong seam. I said, "Okay, you win. That that's much harder to undo than than knitting." Oh. See, so you have to basically like, you know, saw it or melt it back apart. So. Okay, so I got a couple of them, but I'm thinking these threads are not very long. Oh, actually, that's not too bad. Okay, so I'm going to yell even further down the diagonal here. Oh, and what have I got here? Okay, but that one I can carry. Okay, so I see what I'm going to do. Neighbor's mowing his lawn out there. Now that the rain has stopped. Oh, what have I done here? Am I in the right spot? Yes. Okay. Oh, did I do those and just not color them in? Oh, interesting. Two, three, four. Yep, yeah, I did. That means something here is parked incorrectly. I can see it's not matching. Okay, so let's take a look here. Ah, uh, yeah, that means this one and this one not parked correctly. Uh, I see I did this one in the wrong color, but you know what? They're so close that I am just going to, yeah, I am just going to leave it. It'll be our little secret. <laughs> yeah, okay, so let's take a look. Let's see that that's correct, so let's... Yeah, okay, so that's parked correctly. Okay, so, yeah, my gosh. And then that means this one I parked wrong. <laughs> one, two, three, four, yep. Oh my gosh. I have people who get intimidated by more work, like, oh, don't, I make just as many silly mistakes as anybody else. Okay, so this one, I'm just going to do it now instead of just reparking it. Yeah. This is why I grid. I would hate trying to figure out where I went wrong without any grid lines to try to, um, try to orient myself from. It would be just a nightmare. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that one. I'm going to park it right here. And then that way... I can do these two in the corner. All right, there we are. And then this one in this corner here. And then park it 
right there. Okay, I'll deal with that a whole yellow section in a bit, but I actually did that just so that I could continue over here. There we go. There, so I could do all these three at once. That's what I was trying to do. <coughs> oh, pardon me. My gosh. Almost parked that wrong. Let's try to avoid doing that again, shall we? <laughs> okay, I think this is the last one, yeah, in this diagonal. So I'm going to do it now and get it out of my way. Too short to park, so we'll just end it off. Bit of switching back and forth here. That's why I leave things threaded. Hope that noise of the lawnmower isn't too annoying to you. Although, oh, I remember one time when I was a kid, we were renting the place from this uh, older retired couple. They lived at the the lower level and we lived in the upper level. And uh, the guy cut his grass every day in the summer. Like, come on, dude, it doesn't grow that fast. He had one of the ride-on mowers and I think he was just bored because he was retired and he had nothing else to do. And, uh, oh. And I swear it was like every day Every time you tried to do something you needed quiet for, that ruddy mower would start up, you know. Like, Come on. So yeah, we would start joking. Oh guys, the grass must have grown, you know, a millimeter last night. He's gotta cut it again. <laughs> Uh, dude, maybe find a hobby, you know, that actually creates something instead of just cutting grass. Oh my gosh. Uh, I wouldn't have minded except that thing was so darn loud. You know, you couldn't hear the TV or yourself talk, yourself think or talk to somebody because it was, you know, it was loud. And we'd have the windows open because, you know, it's summer and it's hot. We wanted to get some air moving, but... Uh, yeah. Yeah, that was the first year after we moved off the island. And then we had no basement, of course, because we were just renting the top. And then that year it was like plus 40, which isn't standard, you know, here. It does happen, but not that often. And yeah, I thought we were all going to die. <laughs> we were so not used to it. That's 40 Celsius, so... 
I think that's like 90 Fahrenheit or something. Maybe more 100. Yeah, actually, I think it's closer to 100 Fahrenheit for all you who use Fahrenheit. So, yeah, it was darn hot. Way too hot. Yeah, I complain about the cold, but I always say if I have to choose between it being too cold or too hot, I'd rather choose too cold. You know, you can always put on another sweater, get another blanket, make yourself, you know, a hot drink, snuggle up with, you know, a loved one to stay warm. But uh, when it's too hot, you know, what can you do? It can only strip down so much, you know. Yeah, although this house isn't as bad now that we have properly insulated the attic. Because, uh, yeah, the first few years when we lived here, the sun would really beat down on the top and just turn the whole house into like an oven. Because there was no no insulation to stop it so oh that was not good but yeah it's much more energy efficient now so it stays much cooler yeah that was um my son was a toddler so he did a lot of uh a lot of time in the summer and just to pull up uh, yeah it was just way too hot or i remember for a while when he was teething it was a pull up in a bib <laughs> To catch the drool. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to thread this one along the back because this color is quite bright. Don't want to risk it showing through. 3760. Okay. There we are. Oh. Yeah, so up here we don't have as much problem with it being too hot. Our problem is more in the um, like end of winter it keeps um, thawing and refreezing so the roads are not fun. Yeah, they get pretty dangerous so we get a fair amount of freezing rain at that time of the year too so that's uh yeah. That's always interesting. Okay. So I had to do all sort of that just so I could do these two without doing anything out of order. Ooh, the lakes I go to, which is funny because earlier I broke that and did one out of order, but oh well. There we are. Mm. Must have inhaled some pollen when I went on my walk earlier. Yeah, feeling a little stuffy. 
Oh, there I go again. Pardon me. <coughs> okay. I think this is another one I can finish off. Yep. Yeah. There we go. Very nice. Yeah, there's some brighter colors here I wouldn't have expected in this pattern, but it works. Oh, look at me bonking the camera. My apologies. Er, five, nine, seven. Okay. I can see I'm going to end up with multiple threads here, I'm thinking. Yeah, that's just the way it's going to work out. Oh, pardon me. Back and forth, back and forth. There, now I get a whole bunch at once. And as this is a new thread I started, this should have enough. Well, there, we worked our way back up, like I said I was gonna. the other direction otherwise I can't park in the upper right that is the one rule I don't break always park in the same spot okay you know what these are technically in that diagonal but 
is they're not threaded. I think I'm just going to set them aside until next time. So they're kind of tied around each other here. So I'm just gonna untangle them first there before I park them so they don't become a bigger problem later. Yeah, that's just what I'm gonna do. So yeah, after all that working up, I decided not to do them. Haha. <laughs> I'm just keeping y'all on your toes. Yeah, I was saying earlier, didn't like to take my stitching as much places. Yeah, I saw one where somebody got sunscreen on their on their piece and it stained the floss. And they tried so many things to remove it, it was just heartbreaking. So yeah, I'm very paranoid about that happening. So knitting is easier to wash, I think. Because uh, yeah, I hand wash all my my cross stitch knitting you can throw in the washing machine so and especially depending on what fiber you use because um i mostly knit with acrylic yarn so it really doesn't stain very easily it resists it resists that quite well so So I more take a portable piece when I want to, uh, when we're visiting family and we're going to be sitting around for quite a while. Okay. Well, the thing is too, I can't stitch in the car because that makes me motion sick. I can knit in the car because I don't have to look at my hands for the most part. I do it by feel, so... Yeah, the only problem is a lot of times they won't let you take it on a plane. It really depends on the uh, the TSA agent you get because um, some people have taken them on planes, no problem, some haven't. Uh, just depends. I had one who said she got hers because she used bamboo ones and she put them in a pencil case with a bunch of pencils. So they let her take them on her. One used her uh, bamboo knitting needles as a hair sticks in a bun. So they let her take those on. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I even have people who, you know, printed out the TSA guidelines to show them, but I mean, still at the end, it's up to their discretion, so. <laughs> Or even had some who said, you know, they um, get yourself a self-addressed envelope and that way if they say you can't bring it with you, then um, you can at least uh, mail it back to yourself. So, but yeah, I don't fly very much. So, geez, I can't remember the last time I did. I think my son was like two, one and a half, something like that. So, yeah. It's been a while. Oh gosh, and of course, he, he was a wiggly little guy. And 
a runner and uh, we're waiting in line and he managed to get away from my husband. So my husband ran after him and grabbed him. You know, he went through security and the guy's like, you know, don't do that. And he said, well, I'm sorry, but if my kid's running away from me, I'm going to catch him. I'm not just going to watch him and let him go, you know, like, uh, and, uh, and then he said, okay, I'll go through the scanner. And the guy says, no, no, that's all right. And it's like, okay, well then why'd you make such a big deal about, you know, him running past the scanner and not going through it? Uh, but you know, yeah, like I said, we're at an international airport, you know, somebody could scoop him up and take off. Who knows? Unlikely, but you know, every parent's worst nightmare, right? And yeah, I know he's probably thinking, I oh, should keep a better hold on him. But I mean, yeah. Have you ever tried to hold on to a toddler who does not want to be held? <laughs> it's like trying to hang on to a slippery fish. My gosh. When they want to get away from you, my goodness. It doesn't matter that you're bigger and stronger. They can find a way to wriggle out of your hold. Oh. <sighs> Okay, so I think I may call it a day there. So yeah, I'm going to have to pick up my son soon. So yeah, I think that's a good stopping place. So uh, thank you so much for joining me today. And I hope to see you here again another time. All right, thanks everyone. Bye.